Battle of Chaeronea, fought in 338 BC between the Greek alliance led by Athens and Thebes against the Macedonian king Philip II and his heir, soon to be the great Alexander. What's up guys and welcome back, we're here with another DEI historical battle for you today and today we do have a glorious 3v3 here as we are recreating the Battle of Chaeronea. And uh, yes, we do have a very interesting setup already in place. We did have a very narrow battlefield already sort of set up, ready for the historical sort of setting, like Karanaeus fought between a bit of a river. Well, we have a bit more than a river, but it's a sort of water uh, sort of feature. And then uh, we do have a, a long, long high ground over here, which uh, was not really usable for the phalanxes of the Greeks and the uh, Macedonians. So. It was fought between in a very low area, but already history has been changed and the Greeks have taken the high ground in this interesting battle. And it certainly will be interesting to see how this one goes down. The Greeks have got very little cavalry to deal with the Macedonian cab and the uh, phalanxes of the uh, Macedonians do outrange the, uh, the phalanxes of the hoplites. This was historically a victory for Philip and his son Alexander fought there together for the first time, I think it was. It certainly was their most uh, famous battle uh, fighting together. And uh, yeah, it will certainly be interesting to see who wins here today. Will it be a Macedonian victory again, or will history be changed and Greece be victorious? Uh, we do have the Thebans being represented by Rhodes here, so we don't, there isn't a Thebes faction in DEI. Um, and they are kind of like the, the second major sort of like uh, faction uh, for the Greeks after the Athenians. So we have two Athenian armies, and then we have one Rhodian army representing Thebes. And uh, yeah, it just seems as though the engagement is about to start as the uh, Turkish Spades awkwardly march forward towards the, uh, the hoplite wall here. But really, as you can see, Rhodes is giving ground every single time as Rhodian hoplites hit. He's giving ground at any opportunity. They do not want to engage the long Turkish Spade that we hike from here. But yeah, this is, uh, I've been reading a lot about Master and uh, like Master and Alexander and Philip. So really wanted to try and recreate another one of these uh, awesome, awesome battles uh, that the Macedonians fight. The, their war machine is just unbelievable. They just were a society geared for war, um, really honed by Philip, and then just Alexander really just like sort of made it into a, a masterclass and kind of finessed it uh, with the sort of speed that he, uh, that he had and the iron will. That he had. But yes, this uh, certainly should be a fun one, that is for sure. But yes, if you're enjoying the uh, DI Council and want to see more historical battles, guys. Do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're around here, and a comment show support. It's very much appreciated. As we uh, see what happens now. The Rhodian Hoplite's already getting hit hard with the uh, missiles here. Got the Rhodian um, missiles back here. I think the Greeks have some pretty good uh, sort of like Hoplite uh, sort of like mercenary units and also have good range units as well. Lots of uh, Rhodian slingers back here being kept in reserve. And you can see already, look at that. Rhodian and Hoplites have already started to rout. I think this is this mix of Hoplites, uh, I'm sorry, the Sarissa Pikes and also the missiles, and they're breaking at 158 there. That is really concerning, actually. Oh, These are a Hoplite unit, but they are also a, a Javi unit, or like a missile unit. That's interesting to see. I did not realize that was a unit. That is very cool. We've got some light phalanxes coming forward as well. It looks like, uh, yeah, Massa's going to fight out in the, uh, in the forest here. Let's just get rid of the foliage so we can actually see what's going on. Yeah, you can see the lights, the light off lights here, already retreating. You don't want to deal with that sort of uh, that sort of problem. We've got Cav here in the back lines, you need to be careful of this. Uh, do the uh, Rhodian players. Uh, but yes, it seems like the, uh, that the Macedonian cavalry is going to retreat for now. We are now seeing exactly what happens in history. Uh, we're seeing a split here by the um, by Alexander's Cav. I guess you could say this is Alexander here, um, because uh, Philip often um, fought on foot with his uh, with his bodyguard, or well, Alexander on uh, on horse. And yeah, as you can see here, he's going between the enemy lines and he's splitting them, which is exactly what happened in history. Um, the Thebans advance, I believe it's the Thebans advance, um, or and then uh, they Alexander was able to get behind, or it might be the uh, Athenians. Either way, the Greeks advance, uh, making a split in their lines, and Alexander could manage that with his cavalry. That's exactly kind of what's happened here today, which is kind of really cool to see. You can see uh, now Alexander's bodyguard as a 200 man unit is getting in there. Yeah, I guess we'll say this to Alexander. It's kind of cool to say this. 
Yeah, he's getting in there and he's actually taking out a lot of these uh, missile units here and then a charge there from the other cap unit getting in there. And now these uh, missiles sort of like hybrid hoplite units getting in there and the pikes are fully engaged now across the line. They are doing as much damage as they can. Saris is here just outranging the hoplites. You can see from here, look at this, the hoplites are just going to stand there and take the hit. Hope that they don't get pierced by Sarissa. It does look good. We've got some Basilicoi, uh, like, held, um, like Flangites. And then we also just have some uh, normal Chalk Speedos, so like a variety in quality. And you can see here, uh, the looks like Alexander's going to try and get out of there. He has taken a lot of heat. And I think that's yeah, him done for now. 153, he's shaking actually, 10% morale. Uh, and there you go, he's wavering. 0 to 10, he might route here. And there you go, Alexander's routed at 130 men left and he's actually going to run towards the Athenian lines and that is probably going to be the death of Alexander which is hilarious. Yeah, there you go, he's running into a phalanx there and that is going to be costly for him, that is for sure. Um, what is going out on the flank over here? We've got a bit of an engagement going on. It uh, looks like we've seen some of the uh, Macedonian camp here, the Thessalians, a uh, loyal uh, subject now of the Macedonians. They've managed to take up the uh, Greek cavalry over here, so we've got some phalanxes also trying to uh, chase them off. But yeah, the flanking uh, flank uh, fight over here between the lights is going uh, on quite quite nicely. It looks like it's evenly matched. It looks like the um, the Cretan has uh, the Cretans uh, are going to win that fight there. I think they're just supposed to represent like sort of Macedonian light infantry. Brutal fight going on. Here we go, we've got some more uh, phalanxes coming forward. We actually have some pikes here for the Greeks. Well, like this is a little bit uh, ahistorical, but I guess to try and balance it from some sort of uh, some sort of um, fight against it. I mean, you could argue that they're like sort of like uh, mercenaries that are serving uh, like Macedonian exiles, maybe or something like, like serving with Athens. It's a, it's a, <laughs> I'm really clutching at straws for that one. Uh, but yeah, we do have the the famous Hypatists here fighting the front lines. The guys go on to come with Silver Shield. The guys that are really the backbone of the Masurian army. They are the first in and the last out quite often. We've got the Agema over here, Elite Pikemen. They're poking away, doing their bit as well. Those famous red shields. Do what they can, but yeah, like some of the um, some of the hypertists uh, were like fighting up until like their 60s or 70s in like the in the Diadochi Wars, which is insane. And they fought through with Philip and Alexander, then in the success wars. So a lot of fighting for those guys they saw in their lifetime. And there you go, they managed to round some of the uh, the uh, archers over there. Epirus, uh not Epirus, sorry, uh, Rhodes is in very much in uh, disarray here. Epirus is definitely not here today. It looks like, uh, yeah, the, the phalanxes and then the cab in the back line is doing a lot of damage. We have Philotera himself leading the way. His hypertists. Uh, yeah, I mean, this could be fun. I think there's another general as well. It's also a hypertist general. They're looking glorious. Stabbing away, boys. Stabbing away. But yeah, they're just running down these, uh, these like, phalanx men. And harass them. We've got Agrianians as well in the back uh, back lines. These guys are loyal subjects after being subjugated by the uh, by the Macedonians fighting on. And then you can see now it's looking a bit dire. The, uh, the general being lost for um, one of the armies is pretty, like Alexander being lost. It's a pretty big hit, but it doesn't look like it's going to affect the elite uh, hypothesis here. Which now are getting one being attacked by um, mercenary hoplites. They need to really form hoplite walls. That would really help them. These are, yeah, some mercenary uh, hoplites, which are a really good unit, actually. They'd actually be a pretty decent match up like, for the, uh, the Hypertists. There you go, form the hoplite now. Hoplite will now. I will certainly help them out. And here we go, a big push now coming on from the uh, from the Athenians on this, uh, this flank here. They've kind of managed to isolate a lot of these light troops here. And now they're going to like swing on by. Actually, maybe overwhelm this Macedonian line a little bit here. We've got the Agema. Still sort of holding on, but they're kind of getting caught out of position here. We've got a PD and flights going in. They are going to force back the Agema. They were reforming their line. You can see the uh, Hypertists here are starting to waver, and they've broken 165 men. So, yeah, some of the elites now starting to give way because of that loss of a general. 
That is really concerning for them. We've got the uh, Sarissa Cav over here. The light Sarissa, uh, light Cav, and we've got some Thessalians still alive, looking for some action. I think they are the remaining Macedonian Cav alive. At this point, under Philip, Macedonian Cav's not as overwhelming as it is under Alexander. He really, like, uh, monopolizes a little bit more on the cavalry than Philip. Philip really relies more on, like, his Sarissas and, sort of, like, even sort of, like, a uh, hot place of allied troops. But Cholka Speed Ace here moving up, seeing the Pikes now starting to arrive there. The Pikes have been victorious against Thebes, now coming over to help deal with Athens. I mean, Thebes is certainly a right re arriving, or should I say Rhodes? I mean, depend the same thing. <laughs> They're just pretending to be Thebes today. See here, some of these, yeah, these like light missiles still uh, getting out of there. They kind of pulled through a little bit, I think, to get uh, past the Zagriadians, but still doing a very nice job, that is for sure. Yeah, if you want to get involved in any of these sort of like scenario battles and you're wondering how to do so, feel free to join my Discord. The link is down below in the description. It's the best place to go to get involved in any of these sort of scenario battles. We do them every so often. I'm trying to get a few more DI ones done um, because it's a really cool mod and also it's a very, very cool battle that we can definitely do. Um, so yeah, if you want to get involved, feel free to join the Discord. And even if you set some battles that you want to send in, some replays, or just want to chat with some fellow Total War fans, feel free to join the Discord. Oh, well. Yeah, as you can see here, Vasilikoi, Peltaste. This is like Royal Peltaste, just one line. Against the Union Hoplites, actually might not win that fight. Um, because Hoplites are really hard to kill. If you're not a phalanx yourself. There you go, Lights over here managed to do exactly what I just said. The Union Hoplites have been routed. Citizen Hoplites resisting against Macedonian hegemony. There you go, it looks like that pike unit over here is going to get taken out as well. That seems like it's in phalanx or in... Actually, no, it is. It's just uh, sort of in a mess. It's trying to, like, pull out to try and uh, reform up. Uh, the like, the uh, phalanx sort of, like, system, how it works, yeah, it's kind of funny. It's, like, very finicky. You better just, like, move stuff forward than giving attack orders. Attack here we go. Jolt speed day starting to their assault up a hill. Not the best terrain for a pike unit here, but... Worth a try. Seems like it's working. You can see the. Uh, looks like I think we've got all routing. Uh, oh, it says Mercery uh, Hoplites. They've routed as well. I think they've been scared off by the victorious Chocker Speed Ace. We've got a general here. Been backed up by some of the Royal Pikemen. And we've still got, again, there's even more elite Pikemen, I guess. For, look at that. The glorious Macedonian army. Nothing can stop it. It looks like, even though the we, uh, the battle is still how it changed, how they faced off against each other, it still seems that uh, the Battle of Cardonea, we're going to see a victory for the Macedonians here. It just seems that the Sarissas and the cavalry were just too much for the Greeks, and it probably was going to be the case anyway. In DEI, cavalry is so important. And just how this battle is kind of set, the Greeks have minimal to no cavalry. So it was always going to be a tough fight for them. Had the uh, larger army though, ever so slightly. The, the um, elite Macedonian army was much smaller, but uh, it didn't look like they were able to make their numbers count too much. The pikes here, some pike away. Like you can see here, is a perfect example. Like the hoplites are just standing here; they can't do anything. They can't get forward. They need to get. If anything, they need to get around the enemy, which is kind of what the Logodes here is doing. He's trying to get around the side of this child speed a balance. But uh, yeah. Like these uh, mercenary hoplites, all they can do is just stand there and look and just hope that they don't get impaled uh, and sarissed. You see here the Agema, we've still got a lot of healthy Agema here. They are, I don't know if one re rally, maybe. Or maybe they just have four of them. And in order to have so many, but the Lugadis here getting surrounded. They're literally being forced into a triangle and surrounded by the Agema. And even though his son Alexander might have died. Philip is still going to have his victory. I thought the Logan's maybe had routed, but he looks like he's going to soon. He's just getting impaled here by Pikeman. And this, yeah, is not so great. A hoplite wall as well in DI is really tough to kill. So, I mean, this is one way you can do it, I guess, guys. There you go, the Logan's routed. And I think we're going to see a mass shroud in a moment, probably here from army losses. There can't be many uh, Athenians left. 
You see the Cavs still mopping up. I think the Cavs probably got some of the most kills here. Sarissa there doing a very, very good job. There are some returning units, but I think they might just reroute in a moment. Once uh, this main force here gets routed, I think that will break the spirit of the uh, Athenian army. And they will have to beg for peace and subjugation if they want to survive in their precious city to not burn once again like they did when the Persians visited. There you go, looks like the Athenian general there breaking. There you go, a decisive victory. It kind of was, to be honest. I mean, some of the Macedonian armies still came out pretty much uh, untouched. I think mine pretty much was untouched. Apart from some of my uh, javelins, I didn't lose it once. Didn't lose really any men. Um, this is from my perspective. Um, I was playing as uh, the main sort of like Chalker Speed A uh, pipeline. I was like the backbone of the army, as you'd say. Um, my army didn't get many kills, though, because, well, the pikes are very quick, and also pikes don't really get many kills. Um, and DI, in generally, you don't get kills. You go for routing stuff. So, yeah, 126 kills, 142 with, like, the Royal Pikemen here. 129 with the Chalker Speed A's is the best of them. Uh, my general got 98. I mean, I don't know if he even took a loss there. My Javis did 154 kills, which actually, funny enough, is the most kills of any of my units. Uh, then we have Geo, who was playing the Royal Army. He lost Alexander with 106 kills, but his Cav did pretty well. He's still got his health, one healthy Cav alive, actually. Um, I don't know what this was up to later on, but yeah, 259 kills with the Basilicoi here. Uh, is very, very nice. Um, and then we got um, his like Basilicoi, like his Royal Peltas there, 128 kills. Uh, yeah, one of the Agema got one kill and uh, and then like routed. But the others did very well. 175, 259, 162. Um, his Hypertists here, like the um, the Elite Silver Shields, as they go on to become uh, 178, one of them. But yeah, one of them, eight. Shows like the variety, like even Elites can get like, uh, take a lot of losses or do really well and be basically untouched. Um, then we have Sword, who's playing as... Um, the Macedonian, like, sort of like mismatch army, like the lights and all the like the uh, the versatile units, like all the uh, light, like sort of like a uh, yeah, well, just the, the non phalanx units that the Macedonians would have brought. Uh, he also had a lot of cav or D two units of cav, uh, three hundred and ninety seven kills with the Sarissa Foroi here, very very nice. Um, and then his Agrian and Peltas getting hundred and ten kills. His uh, like Usenoi here, which I guess are like light infantry, uh, two hundred seventy five kills, one hundred twenty seven, one hundred seventy two. 182 some very good kills for them then it's agrianium uh like axman down here 319 kills 389 kills these guys did insane then there's like light infantry over here 374 kills 196 kills then we have uh, johnny playing as uh one of the athenian armies getting 93 kills with one of his javelins there um his Hot plates, yeah, really struggled. 88 is the best um, of any of them. They just got outranged by the uh, Sarissas. And we have Cyrus playing as the, uh, sort of like the main, the larger Athenian army, um, getting um, 131 kills with his Athenian archers here. They obviously going to be a threat with the archers. He was 127 kills with one of his hot plates here. Um, 88 kills with the pikes. Um, but yeah, again, really struggled. And then we have Sachex playing as Rhodes, who was just on the back foot from the start, and obviously getting harassed in the back as well from Cavalry. had the largest army, but yeah, couldn't make it, uh, like, sort of make a difference in the end, and unfortunately just got absolutely destroyed by the poor Pikes. Um, but 142 kills with the, uh, with some of these, like, hybrid, uh, hybrid hoplites here, 174, with the uh, lighter hoplite here, yeah, like the main hoplite line actually just got absolutely overwhelmed and killed. It was unfortunate to see. But there you go, guys. That is today's battle. The Battle of Karanea, a Macedonian victory in history and also here today on Total War uh, DEI. Well, that was it was a good battle. I really enjoyed that. Um, and I hope you guys did as well. It was a very short one, but still a very fun one. Um, there are probably, hopefully now up on your screen, other fun battles that you can... Uh, check out that we did we did loads of other sort of alexander's battles and i plan to do a couple of other ones as well but yeah if you want to check those ones out as well there are some fun ones but until next time guys i'll see you in the next one bye for now